Contemplating Trends. October 17th is my 76th birthday. Yikes. The good news is that I'm feeling healthy. I'm planning on another 20 years in this world, and I am contemplating what those next 20 years will be like. Why contemplate the future? First, I think it's a fascinating exercise to look ahead and endeavor to predict what will happen and then see how things unfold. Second, I think it can be helpful to contemplate the future and then find a path in that future that maximizes fulfillment and happiness. Finally, I think it is helpful to think about where things are going and then ask, what can I do to change the course of events? What follows is a very simplistic summary of current trends followed by just a little contemplation on where those trends are likely to lead in the future. I've grouped the trends into four categories, demographic trends, political trends, social trends, and technological trends. Let's look first at demographic trends. The world population has grown dramatically since 1950. You can see from the chart that the world population grew from 2.5 billion in 1950 to 7.5 billion currently, with a growth primarily in Asia and Africa. As shown in this next chart, the population growth has been primarily in developing countries. In recent decades, the fertility rate in developed countries has fallen, while the fertility rate in developing countries has remained high. There has also been significant geographic movement of population. This chart shows some of the movements between 2010 and 2015. Some of the factors leading to population movement among countries are economic opportunity, forced movement, conflict, persecution, and climate change. Within countries, there has been a continuing movement of individuals from rural to urban areas. In the United States, the population has grown steadily. However, during the last decade, the growth rate in the U.S. population has been declining. A number of factors explain the rate of change in the U.S. population. The primary factor has been the decline in the birth rate. The U.S. birth rate has declined from 3.7 children per woman in 1960 to 1.8 in 2017, less than the 2.1 needed for replacement level. The reasons for the decline in the birth rate have been availability of birth control, reduced economic benefit of having children, reduced influence of religious imperative to have children, greater opportunity for women in the workplace, increased interest by women in controlling their bodies and destiny, passage of the baby boom generation bubble through the childbearing years, and the availability of abortion. Immigration has offset the reduced birth rate to some extent. This chart shows us the phases of immigration over the years. In recent years, immigration has been on the order of 1 million per year. Increased life expectancy has also offset the decline in the birth rate. This chart shows how life expectancy has increased dramatically throughout the world in the last century. In the U.S., life expectancy has risen until recently. The downturn in recent years is in part due to the rise of deaths of despair, namely deaths from drugs, alcohol, and suicide. Drug use has been facilitated by the growth of prescription drugs and the growth of international drug trafficking. The browning of America has been occurring and is projected to continue with whites being in the minority after 2025. The graying of America is also occurring. The over 65 percentage of the population is increasing due to the increased lifespan, 
the baby boom bubble making its way to the 65 plus category and the lowered fertility rate. The chart shows that the 65 plus category was 10% of the population in 1960 and is expected to rise to 20% by 2050. Another way to look at this is that the profile of the population in the U.S. is changing from a pyramid to a pillar. Here is a summary of the demographic trends identified. World population growth has been significant, and there has been significant geographic movement of population. The U.S. population growth has been modest, but there has been a browning of America and a graying of America. These are some of the demographic trends that we've seen. Now let's turn to political trends. Compared to prior centuries, wars among great powers have become less common. Here you see a chart of wars between great powers since 1500. While we are very conscious of the deaths in conflicts in the Middle East and elsewhere in recent years, the number of battle-related deaths is relatively low compared to prior periods. Terrorist attacks globally have increased in the last decade. However, since 9-11, terrorist attacks in the U.S. have diminished. Worldwide over the last century, the number of democracies has increased, while the number of autocracies has decreased. This chart shows how the share of the world's population living in democracies has increased. While in 1900 it was only 10%, now it is over 50%. This chart shows the countries deemed to be democratic. China is the major country deemed not a democracy. Russia is classified as an anocracy, which is a blend of democracy and autocratic rule. Three major events have led to the growth of democracy. The aftermath of World War I, the process of decolonization post-World War II, and the fall of communism in 1989. In recent years, democracy has had a decline, as we have seen a shift toward authoritarian rule. Here you see that there has been a decline in one index of democracy. The U.S. seems now to fit the definition of being a plutocracy, namely a society that is ruled or controlled by people of great wealth or income. While the Federal Election Campaign Act of 1971, as amended in 1974, set limits on contributions by individuals, political parties, and PACs, the 2010 Citizens United and related court cases gave super PACs the ability to spend unlimited amounts of money in support of campaigns. Here is the picture of the increase in spending in congressional races. And spending on presidential campaigns has also increased dramatically. It is no coincidence that bills passed correlate highly with the preferences of the groups providing the largest contributions. Recent years has seen the U.S. position in the world economy diminishing. Over the last 150 years, the U.S. enjoyed an advantage due to its abundance of natural resources and natural protection from military threats by two oceans. The U.S. also had the advantage of a relatively stable government and judicial system. World War II effectively gave a significant boost to the U.S. economy. While much of the rest of the industrial world was in shambles, the U.S. emerged with thriving industry. Now, as the rest of the world has recovered from World War II and has grown their economies, the U.S. role in the world has declined. Prior to the Industrial Revolution, China had a large share of the world GDP. The last 50 years has seen China's share of the world GDP rise again. While the U.S. GDP was 28% of global GDP after World War II, it dropped to 18% in 2020. 
China's grew from just 2% in 1980 to 17% in 2020. Here is a summary of the political trends that we have identified. Wars among the great powers have diminished. Worldwide democracy increased during the last century until recently. The U.S. is increasingly a plutocracy. And the U.S. position in the world economy is diminishing. These are some of the political trends that have been occurring. Now let us turn to social trends. In recent decades, the influence of religion in the lives of Americans has declined. One measure of this is that people who describe their religious identity as atheist, agnostic, or nothing in particular now stands at 26%, up from 6% in 1991. Views toward morality have shifted away from traditional biblical Christianity to world views which vary by individual and includes a much more liberal view of morality. Notably, in the last 20 years, there have been dramatic shifts in attitudes toward contraception, abortion, homosexuality, premarital sex, doctor-assisted suicide, divorce, and childbearing without marriage. The income divide is widening. Since 1970, earnings by the upper half of wage earners have increased, while earnings by the lower half of earners have stagnated, and the middle class has been hollowed out. Earnings stagnation by the lower half of earners has been due to various factors. Technology has resulted in automation replacing many agricultural and manufacturing jobs. Globalization has resulted in manufacturing shifting to other countries with lower cost structures. Manufacturing jobs have been replaced by lower paying service jobs. Unions have become weaker. There has been increasing rewards to capital as opposed to labor. Compensation to business senior executives has increased at a greater rate than pay to other workers. Income taxes are less progressive than in the past. Women have made economic gains, but the wage gap between women and men still exists. Women are likely to make further economic progress due to a higher percentage obtaining bachelor's and graduate degrees than men. After decades of rising violent crime in the U.S., it has declined. However, the perception is otherwise. The perception of the growth of crime is true with respect to cybercrime. Internet use has increased dramatically and is changing many aspects of life. Individuals are increasingly obtaining their news from social media and TV channels that support their viewpoint. The U.S. has become increasingly partisan on most major issues. Over time, Democrats have become more liberal and Republicans more conservative. The gridlock in Congress has been due, in part, to gerrymandering. Summarizing the social trends we've looked at, the influence of religion in the lives of Americans has declined, the income divide is widening, the position of women is improving, crime in the U.S. is declining, while on a worldwide basis, terrorist events have become more common. Prescribed and illegal drug use has increased, the Internet has changed and is changing many aspects of life, and people in the U.S. have increasingly become partisan. These are some of the many social trends that have been occurring. Let us now turn to technological trends. The chart shows how the global average temperature has increased over the last 100 years. The magnitude of climate change beyond the next few decades depends primarily on the amount of heat-trapping greenhouse gases emitted globally. The major greenhouse gas, carbon dioxide, is emitted naturally and by burning of fossil fuels 
and stays in the atmosphere many years before dissipating. Climate change is due in large part to human factors. All sectors contribute to greenhouse emissions, and China and the United States are the largest contributors to greenhouse emissions. The consequences of climate change are temperatures will continue to rise, the frost-free season will lengthen, precipitation patterns will trend toward heavy precipitation events, there will be more droughts and heat waves, summer temperatures will rise, the intensity, frequency, and duration of hurricanes will increase, sea levels will rise 1 to 4 feet by the year 2100, and the Arctic is likely to become ice-free. Technology is increasing at an exponential rate. The exponential rate of change is hard to anticipate for individuals who tend to see the rate of change as linear. Thus, when there is a jump in technology, it tends to surprise us. There is a tendency to focus on current technologies which naturally mature at a lower growth rate, rather than emerging technologies. The availability of capital has the potential to turn ideas into practical applications. While the investment of venture capital in Silicon Valley projects has declined somewhat, as venture capital has focused more on other regions and countries, capital is still readily available to finance new ideas. Technology has the potential for disruption and innovation in all areas of life, including business, daily life, education, food, health care, and entertainment. In summary, I have identified two major technological trends. First, changes to the environment are having increasing effects. And secondly, technology is increasing at an exponential rate. What trends will continue through 2040? I think there are several trends that have significant momentum and are likely to continue for the next 20 years. World population will grow, primarily in Asia, Africa, and the Middle Eastern countries. In the U.S., there will be both a browning and a graying of America continuing. And the U.S. is likely to lose in economic dominance to China. These trends will likely contribute to more world instability and increased competition for resources. Even with a reduction of emissions, the cumulative effect of emissions will increasingly cause global warming with related problems. Technology will continue to grow exponentially with dramatic effects on all aspects of life. And technology offers the hope that mankind may rise to successfully meet the challenges ahead. Many aspects of the future are uncertain. On the one hand, the U.S. could continue to be divided in terms of haves and have-nots and in terms of social and political views. On the other hand, there could be an awakening of social conscience that would move the country in the direction of the Danish model with universal free education, medical, insurance, and other universal benefits paid for by higher taxes. What to do in the face of this outlook? I recommend the dictum of Jeff Bezos, founder of Amazon. If you fight external trends, you're probably fighting the future. Embrace them and you will have a tailwind. Happy sailing.